Hello and welcome to another coding challenge that can also be considered a very fast paced tutorial. Something that you can see in basically every game is that the player is able to save the game at certain points and load it either during gameplay or when starting the game once again. In this episode I will show you how to set up a basic saving and loading system with three functions, one for saving a game, one for loading one and the last one for deleting a save game in less than 15 minutes. So let's get started right away. For this project I started with the top down template provided by Unreal Engine and just so that we've got something to save here I implemented a little health system so you can see our health bar 50 of 200 and some little pickups that we can walk over in order to gain some HP. I added a saving and loading folder so let's go in there and open up the main widget. I'm already adding this to the viewport on begin play from the character class. Currently that only contains the health bar and the health text. Then I will also open up the top down character. Basically what I want to create are three functions. One to save a game, the second to load a game and the third one to delete a save game. So let's create those three functions. Load game, save game and delete save game. Then we've got to call them. I will just use some simple buttons in the main widget. So let's head over to the main widget and in here I'll look for a button, drag that one in and grab a text, add that onto the button. Then I'll call this one the save button, Bend the style, go to normal and I'll make that a very dark gray. Then I'll go to hovered, maybe make that orange copy paste hovered for pressed and just make it a little bit darker and then I'll copy the normal for disabled and make it a little bit darker almost black with an alpha of 0.5 so semi-transparent then I'll remove the padding increase its size so that we can actually see something and then I'll select the text enter a text here so safe game will be this one no padding needed and I'll maybe increase the size to 28. Something that you have to keep in mind is that your mouse can hit text objects. So scroll down and make that hit test invisible. That way we can press on that save game text and still hit the button below. Then I'll anchor that to the right center here. Set the position in X and Y to zero and then set the alignment to one in X and just give it a little bit of offset. Then we can copy that, paste it onto our canvas and make this one here the load button. Select the text here and make it read load game. Then I can grab the position in X from my first button, paste it onto the second one and just increase the Y to something like 100. Finally, we can copy that load button, paste it onto the canvas again, call this one the delete button and select the text here, make that say something like delete save game and then I'll lower the size so that actually fits within the button, maybe 22 or 20. Yep, yeah, that looks fine. Grab the X from our load game button and paste it and the Y will be 200. If I compile and just play a little, you can see our two buttons, perfect. We also want them to do something. So let's head over to the graph, remove the events here, we don't need them. Then we'll select the delete button and add it on click and do the same thing for load and save. We created the functions in our character, so we need a variable. Just call that character. Type here will be top down character reference. And let's make it expose on spawn and editable. Now we can drag that in and call the correct functions. So on click load button, we will call load game. Then on click save button, we will call save game. And finally, delete save game. Hook everything up to the events, compile safe and close your main widget. Can minimize our character for now. And now we will have to worry about what we actually want to save. So in our case, I want to save the health, which is just an integer in the top down character. Then I want to maintain the position and rotation in our world. So that are three variables. And what you always need for saving and loading is a so-called save game class, so right click blueprint class, expand the all classes and here you can look for your parent class so that will be a safe game. Let's just call that top down underscore safe and open it up. In here basically what we need to do is to create copies of the variables we want to save. So the first one will be called saved health and that will be an integer. Then I mentioned that we will save the location so save location which will be a vector and finally the saved rotation which will be a rotator. 
compile and save. You don't need any logic in here, just the variables. Close it and we can worry about our functions here. Apart from the three functions we already created, we need another one called update buttons. Basically, we can't load a game when there is no save game and also we can't delete a save game if there isn't one. And to make sure that this doesn't happen, we will turn off the buttons if we haven't got a save game, all right? What you have to do here is call a function called does save game exist and that will be asking you for a slot name you can basically think of this as the name of the file that saves all of your variables to make sure that we always plug in the correct slot name and that we don't make any spelling mistakes in here let's just promote that to a variable called save slot name and if we compile you can enter a default i'll just call mine save game now we got a return value then grab your main widget let's get the load button and we will set is enabled to the return value here so if there is a save game we can hit the button if not we can't and do the same thing for the delete button we can just copy paste our set is enabled node hook up the delete button and also connect the return value to in is enabled. Pass save this function. And if we head over to the event graph, here we are creating the main widget. I already added this on event begin play for our health bar. It's asking for the character, which will be a reference to ourselves. And before we add it to the viewport, let's call update buttons, okay? Because if we then play test, you will see that only save game is enabled by default, which is what we wanted to achieve. Now to fill out our functions, let's start with save game and first off what we will call here is create save game object it will be asking you for a class so that is the one we just created top down underscore save and make sure to promote that return value to a variable let's call that save game object because we want to update its variables to match ours which is the process of copying the values into a class that is persistent after we set the reference here we can grab it and set its variables. So set saved health and set saved location. Finally set saved rotation and whatever other variables you want to save. Then hook all of that up to the execution chain. Then we can plug in the correct values. So saved health, we want to save our current health, which is an integer variable I created before starting this video. For our location, we don't need a variable because there is a simple function called get actor location which will do that for us. And same goes for rotation. We can just get actor rotation. After having set all of the variables, what you do is copy your save game object and save game to slot. Now you have to make sure that the slot name is the same one you used for the function here, the update button function. So I'll save slot name. And because we now created a save game, we also have to update our buttons could leave it like that, but just to boost your performance by a little bit, you don't always have to create a save game object every time you call this function. So when we start it, let's grab the save game object variable and check whether that is already valid. If it's not valid, we have to create it and set the variable. But if it is already valid, we can just skip that two nodes here and go directly into saved health. All right, compile and save. Then we can close that function. Let's do delete save game. That one is very simple. You just call delete game in slot then hook up the save slot name and after that we want to update the buttons so that we can no longer load that's it already for this function let's go to load now that's a little bit more complex but also not too difficult in here you just call load game from slot it'll be asking you for a slot name so plug in your save slot name what it returns is a save game object reference and we have a variable for that in here so we want to set that to it however we can't plug that in right away first off we have to cast to top down save so our custom save game class that we created based on the save game master class right if that succeeds we can set it now loading is basically exactly the reverse thing to what we did in save game so instead of setting the values of our save game object we want to set our current health and to grab it off of your save game, get saved health. 
Okay, we want to do the same thing for location and rotation. However, we haven't got variables for that, as I already said. So we want to look for set actor location and rotation. We can check the teleport because we don't want to worry about collision and physics and so on. And we grab that from our save game. So saved location and also saved rotation. That's what we have to do in here. However, our current health is just a variable. Changing that won't change anything in the UI. So I've got a function for that called update health display, which was part of the health system I already added. So we can just call that afterwards. And because loading a game doesn't change anything about our save game files, we don't have to update the buttons afterwards. However, same as with the save game, we can simply boost our performance a bit by grabbing our save game object and calling is valid at the very beginning here. If not, just load game from slot. But if it is already valid, we can just skip to our set current health node. Compile and save this and that should already be working. So let's see whether everything is fine. Okay, now I'm in play mode. I'll just change my location. Let's maybe go here and then hit save game. That enabled our two other buttons, load game and delete save game. Now I can just go somewhere else, maybe pick up some health. So that changes 75. And now if I load, my position will be reset and the health will be 50. If I delete the save game, I can no longer load it. Then let's pick up some health values here. 150 and let's go here maybe. Then I will save, go somewhere else and load it. And that's also working. Currently saving and loading works perfectly fine while you're playing. However, if you restart the game, you would just start with the default values again. So somewhere in the middle here and with 50 HP. So let's change that. Simply go to your top down character and event graph, begin play. Maybe before we add the main widget, we will call load game. However, during gameplay, we control whether you can load the game with our buttons. That is not the case on event begin play. So we have to check whether we've got a save game. Does save game exist with the slot name being our save slot name? Then you get the return value and add a branch. And if it's true, we will load game. And after that, add to viewport. And if it's false, just add to viewport. So if I start the game now, we should be at the location I saved before with 175 HP, I think. Yep, 150 it was. If I delete the save game and close and then play again, we're at the default with 50 HP and default location and rotation. All right, so that's working perfectly fine. If you wanted to implement something like auto saving, it would be as simple as going to your active viewport on event begin play and then set timer by function name. The function name will just be save game. Make sure to spell that just like you did in your function. Hit that looping and let's say we want to save every five seconds. Compile, save. Now if I walk around, after five seconds, our button should be enabled. Yep, they are. And if I then load the game, we will be set to the automatically saved position, rotation and health. All right, that's it for creating, saving and loading as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.